I thought it might be interesting for me to review uh, my journey with painting. And by doing so, I, I don't mean to imply that um, I did anything extraordinary or um, it's, you know, it's just, you know, my, my journey and my story about how I learned how to paint. But I think it is sometimes often useful to hear these stories because, um, you know, as a new painter, I certainly didn't know what the journey might look like, how many years it might be for me to you know, paint well. I also want to um, you know, emphasize that I'm still very much a student of painting and I think I always will be. And I think that's as it should be. And that really isn't a pose or, you know, it's not you know, it's an affectation. I really think that in order to paint well, you have to be constantly learning how to paint. So when I got it into my head that I wanted to learn how to paint, it was something I, I you know, dabbled with. I mean, you can't get through art school without, you know, having some paints and smearing some paint on a canvas, but I, I really knew nothing about painting. I focused on drawing in art school, and I specifically focused on scratch board and the art of the woodcut. So when I was 42 years old, I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to learn how to paint. So every day from approximately 6 o'clock to around 11 o'clock in the evening, I would paint for four days a week. And um, I didn't let anything get in my way. I, I wouldn't watch TV. I, I didn't even listen to the radio or, or get on the internet. So those, those hours for those four evenings were just set aside to paint. And really, I didn't have a lot of information about how to paint. I checked out some books from the library. It, um, they were you know, some, somewhat helpful. I mean, it's good to see other painters and how they, they work. I accumulated a nice library of, of books about painting as well, so I would frequently look at those books. But throughout that year, I really didn't have a lot of success. And at the end of the year, I um, essentially threw all those paintings in the garbage. What I did is I, I, uh, I got a screwdriver out and I took the canvases off all the stretchers. I rolled them up into a big ball, it was about like this big and just took them out into the uh, alley behind my studio and threw them in the dumpster. So that was sort of a painful year, you might say. <laughs> One thing that was, uh, you probably think that, that it might have been an easier year for me because I had a background in illustration and I could draw and so on, but really it was maybe even more frustrating because I thought, because I had this uh, ability behind me, this um, a certain list of talents you might say that I use professionally that I should be able to progress quicker than I did and I know my wife who's a painter she thought you know maybe he, he's not a painter maybe he just can't do this you know and, and um, she was very supportive but I know that idea crossed your mind it crossed my mind as well and I just persisted though and the second year was much better I um, began having some successes you know, the, su the successes start coming, uh, like say every tenth painting, you know, and then every ninth painting, and every fifth painting, and so on. And you find that your uh, rate of attrition is dropping. You have fewer, you know, scrapped out paintings. But still, uh, you know, if one out of two paintings is not working, you still feel like you're not a, a very good painter. But actually, I think, especially with painting with thick paint, if you can get one out of two paintings to work, you're, I think you're doing fantastic. So I still have a very high attrition rate. I, I um, have a lot of failures. And one thing I would like to say about failure is that often you can learn just as much from a failure as you can from a success. So a year of painting terrible paintings is maybe hard on your ego, but you can, there's a lot to be learned there. So every time you have a failed painting, you know, don't beat yourself up, just press forward and say that's a step forward. Which brings up another point about the artistic journey, and that is not everybody's journey is going to be applicable to what you're doing. We're all individuals and uh, uh, we have to discover to some degree the way that we're going to paint, the way that we're going to make our art project work for us. But I do hope that some of my ideas might spark ideas in your mind. 
and that you can use that as a point of departure to invent new methods that will lead you to a successful uh, realization of your goals. One thing that can be very helpful as you're going through that year of painting terribly is that if, if you've done something in your life that was really quite difficult but were able to do it anyway, that can be sort of a, uh, you know, a, a, a reassurance that you can do it again. You know, you can pull another rabbit out of your hat. When I was young, I went to Argentina for two years and didn't speak the language when I got there and found it very, very frustrating, to say the least. I basically had a headache for six months as I tried to learn how to speak Spanish. I, I, I wanted to learn Spanish and um, I just was going to do it, but I said to myself, this is impossible. I mean, I can definitely see myself being here in Argentina for two years and never speaking Spanish. So. I had that thought in my mind that perhaps I was going to fail. I certainly had no gift for languages. But I persisted and gradually the obstacles just fell away and by about a year I could speak Spanish fairly well. I started to feel more comfortable. I thought, well, um, I'm, I'll probably never be fluent, but um, you know, at least I've, I've gotten this far. And at two years of speaking Spanish, I preferred Spanish over English, and when I returned to the United States, I actually uh, sought out some friends who spoke Spanish and just would, would prefer to speak Spanish. I went from thinking that speaking Spanish was an impossibility for me to realizing that I could, I could learn Spanish and that I could learn to speak Spanish quite well. Later, back in the United States, I enrolled in art school and I needed a way to uh, fund my education. so. I applied at a job at an animation studio and you know I must have had some some aptitude I certainly was enthusiastic about the job but I really could not do it very well and I was trying to learn a way of drawing that was very specific to the industry and I found it extremely difficult but I think because of my experience with trying to learn Spanish and doing it I decided that I could, you know, pull another rabbit out of my hat and I could learn how to do this. And it took me a long time to learn how to do it, but I eventually succeeded. So those two events, uh, both of which I determined were impossible for me, they were not, uh, you know, native gifts by any stretch of the imagination, and yet I could do it. So I, I offer those as examples. Of, of how we often can do more than we think we can, even though we might define something as impossible. You can probably look back at your past and find you know, events where you thought uh, you did something that was probably quite difficult or you overcame some uh, long-term situation that could be a foundation for you learning how to do something else that's quite difficult. Some people might be inclined to think that maybe I'm you know, making the whole painting project a bit too rational. But, you know, for me, you know, painting is a very emotional experience. When I'm painting, I, I go to an un entirely different place in my mind. I, it, it's a very emotional experience for me. But what I'm trying to do in these videos is to, uh, you know, bring in some rational uh, thought, you know, observation about painting because there's, there's no other way to communicate to other people how to paint except, you know, through the, through the vehicle of rationality. So, um, people probably get the impression that maybe I'm a bit too analytical about painting and, uh, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it down to earth too much, but the only reason I, I do that is, is to try to convey and to express to other people how they can learn how to paint. I don't think it really does a lot of good to, you know, to say to a, a, a person who's trying to learn how to paint, you know, here's some paints, here's a canvas, here's some brushes, you know, just have fun. You know, I, that really is not going to get the student to where they want to be. That's why I've opted for a more analytical, you might say more you know, intellectual approach to the art of painting. It's because it's a way of communicating. It's a way of getting that clarity and sharing ideas with people. 
I think, you know, the art of painting, especially, you know, very thick strokes, I think is extremely emotional. And where we want to be as painters is where we really abandon our techniques and we really, you know, abandon the little um, trade secrets and everything and just kind of paint intuitively. That's certainly where I've, by and large, arrived after painting approximately 11 years using a lot of the methods I've described in these videos. Just recently I've gotten quite a few emails from people who, who are sharing ideas that they've experienced in their uh, painting journey. So I really encourage you to you know, continue that sharing of ideas. That's certainly a part of the Thick Paint project for me is to share and see what other people are doing to uh, push the borders of landscape painting.